Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another week of the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast brought to you, as always, by the GSMC Sports Network. My name is Christopher Shepard. Thank you guys yet again for tuning in to today's show and today's week because we have an entirely new week of shows ahead for you guys. Should be exciting, but the show that will kick off the week for you guys today is full of fantasy football and also some college football win projections. We kind of want to get into that as well as the college football season draws ever closer along with the NFL season. First, we start off with the fantasy football do draft list. If you remember, we had a segment where we did our don't draft list. Today is our do draft list. And we go through some of the Big 12 teams, both still there and new, in our college football win projections and totals segments. We should have an interesting slate of new and old, like I said. But before we get into any of those segments, I do want to remind you to like, follow, and subscribe to the show and the network as a whole. Also, we do receive a ton of tips and donations, so if you do feel so inclined, please consider leaving them at the link gsmc.cloud. This may get a bit different, as I will be transitioning to a live setting, and the link will come up for things on YouTube, like Super Chat and Super Stickers and Super Thanks and things of that nature. But for now, gsmc.cloud is the link if you would like to leave anything, even questions, comments, or concerns about the show. Without further ado, let us jump right into our first segment of the day. And like I said, it is in the realm of fantasy football in our due draft list. Now, as fantasy football drafts draw ever nearer, you might be thinking about intriguing options that you might not have expected earlier in the year. Guys who you kind of got lost in the rapture of other guys and might have fallen to the wayside. But this is a list, the contingency plan, if you will, of guys who you might want to consider should your plan not go as expected. We're going to stay on the screen. I have a nice little graphic for you guys. So without further ado, Let's jump right into what a potential fantasy football do draft list is. There are a ton of exciting options at all the positions now, as more and more parity at the top of the rankings of certain positions comes into play. And so I really am excited to present this list. And I did give you my top five list of guys, but I'm going to mention some other guys as well to kind of bolster the list and give you more than just five options because there are more than one option at certain positions and I want you to have a well-rounded balance of guys that you can consider. So without further ado, let's start with my top five. Coming in at the number five spot is a young quarterback just signed a big money extension and the second leading touchdown passer last year in Jordan Love. I think that Jordan Love kind of came onto the scene a little bit so a lot of people weren't really kind of paying attention to him early in the season because nobody really knew what he was. He was an uninterested commodity. Nobody was willing to take the risk. But as the season progressed, and they saw more and more people probably learned about him, learned about his game, and learned about what he could potentially be in the future. And that's what this big contract extension he signed with the Packers was. And another interesting stat to know is that he was the top-scoring QB in fantasy over the last eight weeks of the season. And, like I said, second-most touchdown passes. So, if you really think that Jordan Love can sustain the success he had last year for a Packers team, really going to have a lot of pressure on it in a much more crowded NFC North than usual, then by all means, swing for the fences with Mr. Jordan Love. I don't think you can go wrong with him. Especially because out of all these quarterbacks that are kind of in that middle tier, he's perhaps the one with the most potential to grow, as well as with his team. And that's really important. His team is young. He's young. This is only his second season fully playing for the Green Bay Packers. And so the sky's the limit for him. And I feel like he's slowly becoming the next franchise QB for the Green Bay Packers. So he's number one at the cube position in terms of due draft list. But he's also a nice little streaming option, if I do say so myself. Coming in at number four is a running back who is going to have a lot more carries in a Houston Texan system than people think. Because when you think about the Houston Texans, you think about that three-headed monster, now four-headed monster at receiver in Diggs, Tank Dell, 
Nico Collins and Noah Brown. It's a very versatile wide receiver group. A lot of weapons at C.J. Stroud's disposal. But you kind of do want a solid running back that you can rely upon so that every single element and aspect of your passing game is working. And Joe Mixon definitely brings that to the table. He's not necessarily a high-end guy who is immediately going to put up a lot of production. But I do kind of like him as that guy who just cements himself as a 15 to 18 point scorer. He's always going to be in that range. And I think in this team, if you want to vary things up, you're going to go to mix in a lot. And it could also bolster the production of guys like Nico Collins, who's also going to be on this list. And guys like Stefan Diggs, who's looking to make a name for himself outside of Buffalo and Minnesota. And so, Joe Mixon is just a solid piece to have. I don't necessarily think he will be as highly coveted in certain leagues over others because maybe a PPR league will get more excited about him. Maybe a Superflex league will get more excited about him. And at the end of the day, Joe Mixon is certainly a very versatile option at the running back position that a lot of people might have forgotten about. Coming in at number three is another QB. Just a serviceable, solid, decent QB. It's not going to be flashy, but it's going to put up the big numbers that you're going to need at the starting position, and that is Brock Purdy. I think that Brock Purdy is kind of one of those just-because guys. You can plug him in immediately, and just because he has all these weapons, you feel like he is going to put up the numbers that you would like in fantasy. I don't think he's going to always do you know, too well. There are going to be some games where maybe he's not the big star and, you know, his running backs get going. But at the end of the day, the level of talent at Brock Purdy's disposal is just too ridiculous for you not to consider him because all of those guys are just helping Brock Purdy as a player and growing into the system, and he is now very comfortable within it. And so I feel like Brock Purdy is just a solidified player who you should consider at every step of the draft, even if, you know, he might just be a backup to you. I think that Brock Purdy just can't go undrafted or undervalued, so picking him up would be wise, even if it isn't a backup rule. Coming in at number two, like I said, he's going to be on this list, one of the top players that I love talking about, Nico Collins. I love this guy. I think that he's going to have a Another big season under C.J. Stroud's tutelage. And working with a receiver like Stephon Diggs might be a bit complicated. But at the end of the day, I feel like Nico Collins will still be C.J. Stroud's go-to target because the variation he brings to the offense is something to behold. And I think that every single receiver in this setup is always going to bring something versatile. I think Nico Collins just brings the most versatility, the most volatility, and is a huge plus for this team to have a guy like him because it makes the Stefan Diggs signing seem even more astute by having already a three-headed monster that you can rely upon. And so Nico Collins seems like a no-brainer. He could regress because, you know, it's a season where a lot more elements of the Texans' offense will be revealed. You add Joe Mixon, you add Stephon Diggs, so of course there's going to be a lot more variation, a lot more verbiage in this offense. And so maybe that's why his numbers will decline. But at the end of the day, I really think that a lot of people will highly value Nico Collins when it's all said and done. But he's not number one on my list. Number one is this guy. Why not Caleb Williams at the QB position? Why not a guy who has been so hyped up at the QB position as the number one overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft? And here's why a lot of people should value Caleb Williams. Well, having not played a single snap of NFL football, he already has perhaps the best situation any rookie quarterback has ever had in the history of the NFL. In Keenan Allen, he has one of the most experienced wide receivers in the modern era. 
in DJ Moore, he has someone who's already grown into the system. And Romo Dunze, who's a young rookie, who has practiced with him a lot as well. And so, when I think about Caleb Williams in this system, I think about the numbers that he'll be able to put up while still being a solid quarterback who's just learning and developing in the league. He doesn't necessarily have to be this superstar right away. I feel like if he just trusts his receivers, the superstardom will come with it. And maybe not even superstardom, just being a solid star that the Bears need in order for them to kind of break through to the postseason. And when I look at this list of do draft players, and I look at the similarities between all these players, a lot of these quarterbacks are guys who just fit seamlessly into the system. I think that Jordan Love, they needed that infusion of youth in order for their young receivers to buy into the, the culture that the Packers want to implement. And so adding Jordan Love just was a very smart move for that group. And it's a young, hungry group. And I think about Brock Purdy and, well, it's just a no-brainer for some guy to just facilitate to all these weapons. And even though a lot of people call him a system QB, maybe he will finally drop that notion and really become a star in the league. And Caleb Williams just enters a setup that feels right for him and feels right for someone who has been so hyped up throughout the year as a draft pick. So my, I hope this new draft list really teaches you about not undervaluing the guys who are in seemingly good situations but probably don't get the attention others do because there's going to be a kind of a little drop off after the Mahomes, Allens, and Hurts of the world and then there'll be this whole mix of mid-tier players for your taking and if you do take them they might pay dividends well that's about to do it for this segment coming up we transition to the college football world and we will be discussing can this state can they be one of the top challengers in the big 12 we'll see right after the break <laughs> 